So let's turn to chapter 6, John chapter 6, we're going to continue. How many of you have been reading the John chapter 6? How many of you are enjoying John chapter 6? Because if you take the whole series and listen again, you will hear the spiritual formation of that chapter 6. And John chapter 6 will give you the access to the mysteries of God. John chapter 6 is like a key to the mind of Christ. Jesus himself giving many access, many doors, he opening up many doors through the chapter 6 for the church to enter his dimension or his paradigm for us to be completely built and blessed. So if you don't understand what is being taught, if you have a shallow mind, what is not a criticism or condemnation. If you have a shallow mind, it's talking about the ability to pick up the things of God. It's like if your eyesight is weak and if you need to use higher degree glasses, if you are not having a proper uh, 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 a glass with a proper degrees, you won't be able to see and read. Now that is shallow, shallow. So what do you need? Why, you, why, do you, why are we suffering with shallow mind? Because it speaks about clearly, either you're not from a word environment, number one, number two, your love for the word of God is not established. You don't know why you have to love the word. Because many of us were brought into this religion through the religion called Christianity to just love the word. It's not wrong, that's the beginning stage. Because I was from Christianity. Christianity has laid many good foundations in my life. But with that foundation, I could not go further. I could not go further. The book, the, the, the 66 book became a book called Bible to me, a Christian book, a religious book. So every time when I'm fearful, I'm very confused. Uh, when I don't know what's happening in my life, I just read the Bible. And then whenever I read the Bible, I just claim everything that God will do something, God will do something, God will do something. And that's, that was the training was given to me to trust God and God will do everything. But if you look at the details of the scripture, you will recognize God is not going to do anything because he said on the cross, it is finished. It's not going to work. So what is the word about? The day that you realize that I have a work, and I want to find out how to do that work. And then you go into the 66 book, find the ways to do the work. The whole, my, my whole Christian life paradigm shifted. Now I have to read the book like a GPS to finish my calling, to finish my work. Earlier days, I had to read the word to see what God will do for me. What God will do, how God will help me. How God will come down to do all his work. Humanistic mindset. If God were to come now into the earth and do all the work for you, then God wouldn't have to build us or created us, sorry, created us. God wouldn't need a church if he's going to come down and do everything. He came once to build the church and he gave all authority, all authority. You read the scripture. He gave the power to the body. There must be a reason what? For someone to give you a very powerful position. Of a power to you. There must be a reason. You don't give the power to someone who does not need. Who does not understand. You get promoted in your company because of your ability to carry responsibility. If you are the weakest person who don't regularly come to work, and always fall sick, and a liar and a manipulator, always try to skive and hide here and there, not doing your work properly, and all the tasks given to you has got so much of a problem, you think your boss will promote you. He won't. That clearly shows that this person can't carry power. So when Jesus came and did everything, gave his power to the church, that must be something very high. But the people, the church is not ready till now. The church is not ready till now. But he gave the power to the body because he believed and he knew what he gave to them. The power is in the word. He gave us the word. He gave us the word. Anyone who, who, anyone who enter the word stops everything. See, coming to the word demand us to abort everything else. In early days, people come into the ministry. People came into the ministry. I don't know whether... Most of you guys are not from Christianity. Only a few guys. 
but most of us were safe in this ministry. So let me share with you. In early days, people will be doing very good jobs and here and there. High posts, good salaries. And their testimonies you can hear. I was working in a bank. I was earning this figure. And the Lord called me and I left my job. I came into the ministry. Now think about that. Think about that. Can you think about that? Who would leave a high profile task job and then enter this place where nothing has been assured, guarantee. A wise man will not enter, will not quit all this and come. A wise man. But then those who fell into the world, they came to this understanding that this is, sir, there is something greater than what I'm doing. They abort everything. They abort everything. They enter the world. Great testimonies. I'm not talking about those weak guys who want to enter ministry to make more money. They quit everything and they start church. I'm not talking about those clowns, imposters. I'm talking about those who really caught, hear, heard the voice of the Lord and they first demand, they abort everything and it came. Today, do you have such people? Now everyone is very good in counting their costs. Yes, it is stated one must count the cost. What cost? We are very good in counting your self-centered cost. One pastor came to my house many years ago, came into my house and say, uh, spoke to me about tithing, he had a revelation and he said this to me that God doesn't want you to suffer. So whatever money you take, God wants you to pay off all your debts, pay everything, whatever there is a balance, and the balance when they say, well, no, give a 10% to God. I just told this man to get out of my house. I told him to get out of my house. And I call him Satan. In a proper way, I told him, that's, that's demonic. So what you're trying to tell me is, I'm the guest, I'm the father of the house. So you invite me, my children invite me to the house. They start the party and they eat everything. And they take all the leftover and put one side. And then when the father comes back from work, they give the leftover to the father. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Doesn't make sense, right? It's absolutely wrong. So these are the people who come. So I'm talking about such clowns. I'm talking about such clowns. There are many who are not entering. No, I'm not. Uh, these are not the people. I tell you, there are other people in the world who have really given up all that they plan and work for to enter this word paradigm. The demand of the true church, one of the key demands, you must learn to depart all that you wanted and enter what he speaks or he spoke. Again, don't get me wrong, because many people quit their job because they felt God called them. There are many in my own family. They quit their job and came into ministry and take under in our And then all went back to work. <laughs> all went back to work. I came into full-time ministry very long time ago, but I didn't announce. I didn't announce. I didn't tell anyone. I know the call of my father. I stepped in. I never asked for help. It's my calling. I never go church, church, up a meeting with love offering collect under the number well. And then not to pastors travel to preach in many churches to they will because they get good love offering. I go into Indonesia, I don't go on Sunday preaching. You guys will know. I go on weekdays to conduct seminars and I only train leaders and I have not taken any money from them. Not taken any money from them. If someone were to just forcefully come and give me some money, I will spend the money there for somebody or give it to somebody. You know why? I'm not a beggar. I'm a son of God. But it's the right for people to bless the man of God. But a man of God cannot base his ministry on how much he collects. These are all merchants, salesmen. We are not merchants, we are not salesmen. We are sons of God and we are known as kings of God in the earth. We must learn to behave like kings and not like a vagabond. Right? So this word of God gives you the power, the word of God gives you the power, the word of God gives you the power to represent His infinite kingdom in the earth. You don't know the, the magnitude of that power that God has given to you and me. 
and we behave like lalang, like lalang. Every every wind of change, wind of changes, wind of trouble, wind of uh, 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 what do you call uh, uh, confusion, where wind of everything that blows, you are affected. Hello, pastor. Ah, manusia ceri le. Oh, pastor. Then disappear. These are the lalangs need to be chopped and through. Remove. Naa sol le, wasan itu lek. I can't do anything because this place, this environment, the word environment, is not for such. You can see God Himself giving Gideon the advice, instruction to say remove such people. Remove such people. Remove all the churches will never talk about removing people. All the churches will talk about gathering people, getting the people. The church in the Word of God, the voice of the Father will say, "Remove such. Remove." It, you don't get used to it, huh? That's why I say I don't get used to people because tomorrow God can come and tell me remove this person. <laughs> so I don't want to have any soul tie with anyone. Our connection is in the Spirit. Def, don't misunderstand me. Because we we have been mandated to love everyone, but we must love God more. We must learn to hear Him, and even if God asks you to say leave this man and go to another father, I'm appointing for some other reason. You must learn. You must know how to leave, depart. None of you have been mandated to stay with me forever, but all of you have been mandated to stay with Christ forever. So don't mix up these two things. Don't mix up. I'm not building my life in Christ based on people. You can't base, you can't build your life in Christ based on a spiritual father. The spiritual father is very important to show you the way, but he is not the way. The word of God is the way. So we are all coming to a place, common place. We are interacting, we are getting to know each other. There is no obligation to one another. There is no obligation. All our obligation is to Christ. If Christ is the center, then we don't have a problem. God will keep us together and bring us wherever. As long as you learn how to stand in Christ, then you won't have this issue, sticky issue, human sticky issue, very sticky. Relating with human is very sticky. I'm going to do a big Canva and put on my Facebook. It's very sticky. They stick to you and then they drag you. Those sticky people are soulish people. People are spiritually mature. They are not sticky people. It's so nice to relate with mature people. I'm telling you, and very rarely you find some. I still have problem to find someone to call a friend in this nation. I don't have a friend. Anyone you try to make friend with, there's some kind of sticky issue will arise. So I better say, I don't need friends. I rather just stick with him and just sit in my office alone and do my work. Don't follow my style. Huh? My journey and my life is different. I want you to have friends, but learn. Make sure you apply some uh, WD-40 on yourself so that they won't stick to you. <laughs> yeah, apply some oil on you. Uh, oil, anointing, oil, so that sticky people will come. They can't stick onto you. You know, you sticky thing can't stick on oily things. <laughs> I want to cover myself with the word and doctrine, covered by the spirit of my father. That sticky people can come, but they won't stick with me. Thank God, man. I'm very tired of sticky people. Make sure you don't become one. You don't become one. Don't become a, a emotionally sensitive person. Emotionally sensitive. You see everything from the weak state, weak state of your mind. When someone is picking on you and and using emotional conversation, they you they show their weakness of their mind. Ila pastor, ina puri soltinga pastor. Mana tu wajah ni aite? Oh oh. That's the sound. That's the sound. That's the sound. Sticky. Aunglar tali beke sullle, condemn mana sullle. That person now need to find a spiritual friend to grow. So my advice to my children also as well. You want to see an impact in your life? Find spiritually matured people. Sit with them for two days. You see what happens to you. I don't have to teach you the Bible to become spiritual. You just sit with spiritual people. Always use spiritual kingdom, not freaky Christian people. Karter nallavar, chaba manwo, andur kulle rpo, karter la patu gua. Idala drama case. இது கூட போனால் மண்டை ஓடி போயிடும் தட்டெல்லாம் கிழிச்சிட்டு ரோட்டில் அலைவோம் 
These are freaky people. Don't waste your time with such people. When they use this stone, it's worse than the sticky people. Now, these people are worse than the sticky people. These are people I look at their face, I put my face so close to them and say, please depart. I don't, I'm not interested in talking to you. Because these are people shut their mind for the wisdom of God and follow uh, what you call their flesh, that which is stuck to this religious system. Pharisees. Pharisees. Can't talk to them. So soulish people and religious people. <laughs> I apply oil both sides. So I don't stick on them. I don't stick on these people. I'm just walking freely every day. I'm so happy, guys. Seriously, I'm the most happiest guy because I, these people don't even now come near me. They know I want to automobile. I teach you something. So if someone wants to connect with you or you need to connect with someone, if you need to connect with someone, maybe your spouse, you can't connect because he or he is very sticky. What must you do? Lead them to the word. Create word environment and let them fall into that place that their stickiness will leave. <laughs> and then we can connect. We can connect. It's beautiful. Amen. Hope you guys understand what I'm saying. I'm not teaching, I'm telling you, some people need to leave us, have to go or depart. Don't have soul tie. Don't have soul tie. Your connection must be in the spirit. It's not that we ask you to leave because you can't connect in the spirit so you got to find a place where you are. That's what, how is it? Let them take their things, take their, uh, their whatever things that they have to take and depart and go to their own tents. Own tents, they don't have to go to their own tents. They don't have to go to their When the time comes, when their eyes open, they know that that is the place they will return back. We are not building our house. We are building the house of God. You can't choose who will live in the house, who will depart the house. You can't choose. God chooses everything. You saw God chooses the 300 for Gideon. Gideon could not. Gideon, 30,000 people. 32,000. 22 plus the 10. And then God removes everyone and gives him 300. If you have 30,000, you can just be 32, plus 2. So 22,000 departed, 10,000 came, from there whack everything, another 300 remain. God chooses who will stay with you. God chooses where you will end up, where you must go. When will this happen? When you decide to stand in the word, God will start to speak. If you are not going to come into the word, God is not going to tell you his desire. God will never tell you his plan for you. But the day you learn to enter the word dimension and say, Lord, tell the word, help me. Make me, build me, structure me, use me. When you start to tell to the word, then God enters in your life. He will speak to you the way he spoke to Gideon in the Bible. That's the message. Right now, all of us must return to death, that place. So we have no connection, no soul tie, nothing. If God has appointed someone to come here to hear the word of God, then they are chosen by God. I have no control over them. Amen. So the book of John is going to really crack you up, crack open your mind. Because the battle here is the battle of Jesus, the word of God, having challenges to explain himself to his people. And Gurumba Kastamana would portion chapter 6. I could not really digest the way Jesus was suffering, explaining himself to his people. So verse 32 onwards. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. But the Father gives you the true bread from heaven. What is the point the angle here? Today people are connected to the church, not to Christ. Your loyalty is to the church and not to Christ. You're committed to a church, you know that they won't even give you the proper doctrine or word. You know this church is all about entertainment. You know this place is not giving you the Christ. You know, but you still want to stay there. Because you're connected to Moses and not the bread. This is a disease and sickness. It's sad that you can't understand your own father and you want to go and save, serve your uncle. Uncle spirit. Dr. Sagi have given a powerful teaching on the uncle spirit from the Bible. 
the uncle spirit always try to take over the father's position and write off the father and take the children to work in their vineyard as a slave uncle spirit but uncle spirit will not show you uncle spirit looks very beautiful very nice uncle spirit the spirit of that uncle spirit is to destroy the father of the house that is why for your children in your family don't give any uncle to come and be the father no father there's only one father our indian culture mama peripa tata in the kalacharan irukra edathila uncles are very important today uncles are rapists molesters so you better be careful who your uncles are no uncle has got right in your family the uncle has got right to the brother in the house or the sister in the house fathers must take charge fathers must be redeemed so here that's the problem here he say moses did not give you the bread manna my father in heaven gave you now you know who is defending it the word the bread itself is talking for itself moses never gave father gave i am the bread so we need to be very careful in our journey are we connected to a religion or denomination or a servant of god who have been serving in your life for many years are you stuck with that person you sticky person Jesus answered and said to them this is the work where am I then Jesus most actually I say to you Moses did not give you the bread from heaven but who but who but my father gives you the true bread true bread amen true bread from heaven so we have to say true bread from heaven you have to say heaven heaven means what what do you think what comes into your mind if i say the word heaven now that will change your whole christian paradigm heaven is the house of god heaven is the place nambala when we earn the peru namba thirumbi nanga povom you did not come from heaven please for you to return back to heaven you came from god you come back to god then what is heaven come on think rationally you cannot return to heaven because you never came from heaven we came from the breath of god he blew into adam the spirit that life it returns back where it came from then what is heaven heaven is the finish design for all creation in the earth that will be established must be established only by a son in the order of christ So heaven is a spiritual design spiritual things consists of spiritual matters and finishing that's heaven So Moses actually I say to you Moses did not give you the bread from heaven but my father gives you the true bread from heaven a true bread from heaven we are looking at the scripture because prior to this we read Jesus dealing with the guys who come and say that uh uh, uh they come to him and say how are you here and jesus immediately and telling them what you are not here because you saw the sign you are here because yesterday i fed you sapade so they still talking about what they can get from god food what i can get from god so he says i am the true bread not from the earth i'm not the bread that you eat physic to uh, uh, to uh, appease your physical uh, hunger i am the bread from heaven I am the formula that you need to finish your work. The word of God says the bread in the bread form it says you have a mandate to do in the earth and you don't have the sauce to do it I am the sauce. If you don't eat me you won't have a mandate to do in the earth. Are you all hearing me? Picture pannunga da. Picture that. Very powerful stuff because this portion has been misunderstood. make sense what makes sense pay attention to me pay attention to me don't pay attention to what's happening around you learn how to control your mind look at me i'm standing here 
I'm doing many things at one time. I see everything. But I'm not distracted from my message. Pay attention as the Lord has to speak. Right? I need your mind completely. Because these are things that have been mistaken, misunderstood in the church. The heaven, we, you, we have a mandate to do in the earth. But we don't have the source. We lost it. And then God sends forth from heaven the source. And the source is coming to us and say, for you to finish what I've been given to you, you need me. I am the bread from heaven. I am the work, the task, the formula, the antidote for your redemption and for your establishment back in the Father. I am the solution. I am the bread from heaven. So that's how Jesus is introducing himself to these people. But I hope one day you will understand what I'm saying. Because Christianity did not taught, did not, didn't teach me this at all. I'm frustrated. They taught me how to see God religiously as a man who loves you, will die on the cross for you. He saved you. Now one day you'll go to heaven. Thank Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. They never taught me all this stuff. I'm really frustrated. If I have enough money, I'll bring all those people who taught me wrongfully. I bring them to court and I'll sue them. For not teaching me right. <laughs> I won't do that. Just joking. They did their best. So, verse 33. For the bread of God is He who comes down from heaven. So what is the food you must look for for you to finish your mandate in the earth? you got to wait for a particular food that will come from heaven. The finished design work. Everyone need to look for that package from heaven. Every one of us who says, I'm a son of God, I'm so-called Christian, I believe in God, then you must have your days to stand and look for the package to finish your work. If you don't have the package, if you don't even know that you have a work to be done in the earth, you won't find for the food. If you know that you have been called and chosen by God, then wait and look and ask for the food from heaven to come into the earth for you to eat and manifest. The bread is to eat and manifest. You need food to live. You need food to have strength in your body to do your work. So that is the work in the natural. What is the work in the spirit? The food that comes from heaven comes into you, build your spiritual stability, spiritual strength to establish spiritual things in the earth. You come to me for your natural food every time. That's why Jesus is entering that guy. You don't even know the sign, I am the food from heaven. You need both. You need both. So for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they say, yeah, 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 hear this, hear this, what they, how they respond. Then they say to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Have you all seen people who run for free things every time? We Singaporeans are well known for it. That's why all the guys who are marketing, free this, free that, free this, free that. Let me just tell you the on, honest truth. Huh? There's nothing free. Whatever renovation company giving you free, they're taking from your own pocket and giving you free. And then, wow, free other good karam, free other good karam, why are you talking to I can't stand such people. And people who come and ask for free things, I don't know what to say. So far, I, I, I tell my clients straight, I don't give you free things. You get what your money worth. I don't play the game. I don't do that. Free things. These are the kind of people. And this is the kind of mentality. Can, you, can I have this bread always? You don't even know when you say always. They think this is another food to satisfy you. So they misunderstood. Then they say to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, the word of God speaking to them. I am the bread of life. Who's talking now? The Father in Jesus. The Father in Jesus, the Word in, the, uh, in Jesus, speaking, addressing His people, His body. I am the bread of life. The Father is the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. Because He say always, can, can I get this bread always? So they think it's a daily, day-to-day day hunger. They misunderstood. So here the father is saying, 
in Jesus, through Jesus, saying that, if you have me, you will never be hunger again. That clearly shows that this guy don't understand what he was asking and this guy don't even know that he's talking to him. So the bread that you just asked, if you have me, son, you will never be hunger, hungry again because you will be established, you will be complete. You will be complete. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me, believes in me, transfer into me, believe in him, practice him, understand him, absorb him, consume him, manifest him, believes. In me shall never thirst. What's the difference between hunger and thirst? I believe hunger is something from the natural, hunger, having the hunger appetite for heavenly things. The thirst is having the heavenly things. Sustain you, water, the word. The word of God is to unveil spiritual mysteries to us. That's why hunger and thirst both important. Because we are in a human body, we need to have this hunger that will hunger for heavenly things. And the thirst is the water, it is the heavenly thing. That's my, my understanding. To, for you to easily understand how to unpack these two words. If not, you will not understand when you read the word. Verse 36, But I say to you that you have seen me, you have seen me, and yet do not believe. You ask for, I want the food, uh, uh, you want the food, uh, and then you say, you have seen me, but the problem is you can't believe me. Many of us in the earth, claiming to be Christians, claiming to be following God, have seen God, recognized God, witnessed God, but not have believed in Him, transferred into Him, become the epicenter of Him, become the manifestation of Him. We still go to Him for what you need. You have never gone to Him for who He is. You have seen me, but have not believed in me. If you have believed in me, you will not come for who you are. You will come for who I am. Now we are separating, putting a sieve to separate what is of the Lord and what is not of the Lord. Not all who call the name of the Lord are of the Lord. There are many Christians you mean. Anyone put a cross on their neck, they're going to church regularly, they are not of the Lord. So don't fall for it. You Christian, huh? I'm Christian. You're happy. Now you're very alert. Are you for the Lord or not for the Lord? That's it. I, that's why I don't go and really sit with in that subject. Anyone who come and say, I know the Lord, 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 Kupravala, you're not of the Lord. There are more imposters and merchants and salesmen and beggars, vagabonds and orphans claiming to be Christians. And verse 37, all that the Father gives me, the word of God is saying, will come to me. See that? All that the, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. See what is the word of God is saying. The word of God is saying, whomever the Father leads to me will recognize me. But what were we taught? In our Christian journey, winning souls, bring people to church, and then they come to church, you put them through some classes, and then they convert, and then they baptize, and then they, become, they attend cell group, and then in the cell group, they have to go on and win souls. That's the mandate of the church. And the church has been drifted away because they think their mandate is to win souls. No, they are, our mandate is to represent Christ who is, of, who is in the spirit. And we need to win our spirit man. Without winning your spirit man, you cannot win a soul. You can't win a soul. You must learn how to feed the spirit of a man and the spirit in his, his spirit, the spirit, his spirit will mentor his soul into Christ. Bharti Nesikramanda Anyone who does not love the word, you can't save your soul. Please tell this to the whole world. The Christian world still believing in winning souls. But they don't know how to win souls. You can't win the soul 
without getting the spirit man to be the master of the house. That is why we build spiritual environment built by the word of God. So anyone who comes inside, they get spiritual food and then they make decision and tell the soul, this is strong, we cannot do anymore. That's why when you come to church, you make decisions. You want to quit your bad habits. You want to do right things. You know why always this thing happen in the church? Because the church is supposed to be having the word. Word is the food to your spirit man. When your spirit man eats that food, he becomes stronger and he transfers information from the spiritual dimension to your soul. And your soul becomes a son. Your soul becomes a follower. Your, son become, your, your soul becomes a disciple of your spirit in Christ. Purinja, Purinjinga, Purlana, Purinjinga, Tedikatinga. Seriously, churches will re- go through a major transformation if just can we, we, we can work in these principles. But I say to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. Verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me. That is why I'm not worried who comes and who goes. But those who are appointed by God will stand with me and no one can stop that. Nothing in the world can stop if God has sent someone to me. Nothing in the world can stop if God has sent someone to a man of God. So don't follow the crowd. Don't follow the, the hype of the world. Pay attention to who God has sent to you. You better recognize and start to thank God for those who God who have God sent, the God sent one to us. All that the Father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me see what the commitment of the word I will by no means cast them out. How can I? Why are you offended when I ask you to leave when I say some people leave the church and I say please find another place. Don't get offended because I cannot ask people to leave if they are appointed by God. And God is giving the word, the word of God giving the word if anyone the Father sends to me, by no means, by no means, I will cast them out. The moment you fall, the moment you make mistake, they will call a committee, call a meeting, cast you out, write to the whole world, don't receive that person. That's Christianity. Cheap behavior in Christianity. Many pastors have written about me in my early days. Hey, They are very quick to judge and shut us down. They quickly spread the news, don't receive that person. But the word of God is saying, if my father has given to me, I don't, give a, I don't care about your profile. By no means I will quit on you. I will work with you. That's the order of the church. We are very quick to judge people and cast people out. Are very quick. You know who are the people who are very quick to judge and cast out? Those who are truly serving God. <laughs> we can't recognize because we are blind people. We can't recognize. Now these are the challenges of the word of God. So he's making a statement to everyone. There are different audience there around Jesus. So he's telling this. All that the Father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Go fly kite. He's telling the people, whoever don't understand this, he's telling, go fly kite. I can't do anything because my Father has sent that person to me. For I have come down from heaven not to do your work. I'm here to do the work of heaven. There's a task there. I'm here to do that work, not of your work. Not to see things according to your understanding. I have been mandated by, he- by my Father to establish heaven on earth. <laughs> so my work and your work is not the same. We are here to represent that dimension, not your dimension. 
In your dimension, you can't feed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. From where we come from, we can feed 500,000 with five fish, uh, five bread and two fish. We can. We are, we are of that economy. That's why I don't want You chose the world over the world. We choose the world over the world. That's the difference between us. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will. See, no, not my own will. Even if I like to do what you like, I can't do. I want to do something so that more people will come back. <laughs> but I'm not about my work. I'm about the work of my father. Today, a lot of people doing all kind of magic in their service to attract more crowd people. Crowd. Smoke machine, jumping, dancing, food, la, activity, that program, this program, financial, uh, society, all kind of, so people are coming. Kutta, kutta, my lung, waranga. I'm not doing my work, that's my work. I can't do that. Today, I just have to go and count out to some people. La, kutta andro. People are talking about things, bad things about us, fake and lies, is spreading lies about us, which is not true. And people willing to listen to lies instead of listening to the truth. You can see how carnal people have become. Not only here, in the whole world, the human uh, nature is more prone to lies than truth. When you start a lie, just start a lie on the Facebook, just write something. You see how everybody will start to chat with you, like and all that, comment. Tomorrow, you say you saw a ghost, people will believe. You, but if you say I saw the Holy Ghost, nobody will, everybody will laugh at you. This is the world. People want to hear what they want to hear. So I've come down from heaven not to do my own will. So you all must understand this house, Yahuda, what center is not to do? what we want to do as a church. We are here to do His will and we are not here to please mankind. We got to please the doctrine of Christ. The, the word please is become conformed into that, be formed into that. Into that. Not to be formed or fall into the system of the world. We have no respect for the system of this world. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of Him who sent me. So that, there's a meaning there. That means the word of God came into the earth as called a task. What is the task? To transfer the attribute of the Father to a human. The power of the word of God is to transfer the infinite Father's attribute to a human being. That's the power of the word of God. The word of God can transfer God into a human. Make sense? Picture. So why do you need to look at the word? Because God needs to be transferred into you for you to finish your work. So the word now become your best friend. Best friend, why? The word will help to transfer God into you. Without God transferring into you, you become nothing. Don't worry about going to hell. It's nothing comparing to die without Christ. Hell is nothing. We need God in us. We need God in us. We need our Father in us. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all He has given me. See, it's repeating. That of all He has given me, I should lose nothing. Mudua sulre. Mudua sulre. Inge. For I have come down from heaven. Not to do my own will, but the will of his son. This is the will of my father. So what is the will of the... Particularly pointing out to what is in the mind of the father. This is the will of the father. Huh? So very important. Will of the father who sent me that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing. A true son, a true body, a church must labor to draw that and keep that as the most prized possession. Prized possession. And I should lose nothing. But should raise it up. The word, but should raise it up 
at the last day. The word last day is the day of completion, consummation, finishing. Finishing last days. That should raise up. That means the finishing is when the day that all that he has given being raised up is the last day. Not when the earth, or, or when you have earthquake and tsunami. <laughs> when the body of Christ be formed. All that he gives is to form a body and raise. You see why he used the word raise? What happened to Lazarus? He died and he was raised, resurrected. Jesus died and on the third day, he raised. So now what is he saying? That but should raise it up on the last day. So what is the finishing? Huh? What is the finishing? The body of Christ being raised in the earth in the order of Christ. Isn't that beautiful? I hope you guys will capture the spirit of what the spirit has to say and start laboring there. Invest all your life, your time, your effort, your money, whatever to invest in establishing this truth in your own life. Don't try to establish this in someone's life if you don't have it in your own life. Churches will teach us, go and reach out to people, share the gospel. Let me tell you, you only can give what you have if you don't have Christ, you can't give Christ. Stop reaching out to people until you win Christ. Until you have doctrine inside you. Until you have the love for the word of God. Don't go and reach out to people and transfer your nonsense to them. You transfer your sickness to them. You transfer your mental sickness to them. You, you, you transfer your emotional struggles with them. That's why a lot of uh, scandals are in the church. Women are going into church. There are a lot of scandals there. A lot of men down there take advantage of women. A lot of women are also taking advantage of good men. Why? They don't have Christ. So they transfer crises. Crises. They don't have Christ. Church has become the most scandalous place because they don't have the word. And they, then they start to, a new doctrine. They say, in the grace of God, everything is okay. God will forgive everyone. God accepts it. Jesus died for the sin once and for all. So, even for your sin yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Jesus died once and for all. So, don't worry about your sin. Keep loving God. That is a, a dishonoring a true relationship. We can't do that. So, you want to reach out to someone? Let me tell you straight. Stop reaching out to people. Until you are found. In Christ, I'm found. I'm found. Full of period, doctrine, You must first know that you already entered the word dimension. You you will know that you are in the word already. Your love for the word will be beautiful inside you. Like you fall in love with someone, you always you know the girls talk about their boyfriend, and their boyfriend always about girlfriend at the beginning stage. You know, cloud nine la parandu giri pangala. And the mari ani ki word kula niga varinglo, ani ki you have been found. Money out the epoda, a con your time got a game, what the cool upon on the third thing. You're in the wood, you're found, you're found, God has found you. And every word unveils when you open, start to show you mysteries, right? You are in an intimate relationship with the word of God. It's happening to me. I don't really do deep homeworks. I just open, the Lord just speaks to me. It's for you to go and find out whether this guy is telling rubbish. Go and search, then you know who I, who I am. And where I stand. Not try to market myself. I don't have to market because I'm not looking for attention. I'm here to tell you I'm going on this journey in the word. If you're interested, follow me. Right? Let me wrap up. So verse 40, and this is the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me. The word of God. Huh? The mandate of the word of God. This is the will of him who sent me. The me is the word. Him is the father. That everyone who sees the son, the prototype design, son, and believes in him, practices him. That him becomes my culture, my life, and everything. So believes in him may have, say with me, everlasting life. What is everlasting life? Nitya karma saavave matto bumila valdu gripo. Nila valdu oru punniyamo ille. Sattu porde olu better. Apritha naina nene chikwe. Because why Christianity has taught me we need to live long. We don't need to live long. This eternal life is the status of your heavenly father. So having eternal life, everlasting life means you will have him inside you who will never die. That's the thing. 
that's the whole picture of this whole gospel message right may have everlasting life and i will raise him up again <laughs> and i will raise him up the body raise him up at the last days i stop here you got it you got to hear this at least three times and then get the formula so the churches will christians will come to you and tell you otherwise you must know you have been chosen by god sent to this place by god idha marandikina na onnu seiyamudiyad it is not some people in your life you chose or someone recommended you here and the church ku vanda illa the spirit of the lord led you here how would you know because when i came to this place i fell in love with the word ama valiya idu nadakkalana kalamuga indha eduthu second in the earth what are you receiving what are you receiving in this place religion or relationship to the word if you are relating with the word in this place then this is the place god led you if you are relating with the people and do all other clownish thing you are not called by god edo tappidari vandu ulundinga valakulla please find another place valaya visna kadalla meenu pidikukla kanda meenu matto அப்ப ஃபிஷர்மேன் ட்ரூ குட் ஃபிஷர்மேன்ஸ் என்ன தரமா செய்வாங்க தே புல் த நெட் அப் தே வில் டேக் வாட் வாட் தே வர் லுக்கிங் ஃபார் அண்ட் த்ரூ வாட் எவர் தே டோன் பேக் இன் தி சி இட்ஸ் நாட் ராங் வா டு ஆஸ் பீப்பிள் டு கோ பேக் டு யுவர் சம் अदर பிளேஸ் தட் யூ கேன் சூட் யுவர் ஈச் ஆஃப் யுவர் ஹியர் ஜஸ்ட் கோ இருந்து ஏன் உயிர் எடுக்கணும் बिकॉज वी हैव अ पर्पस वी हैव अ मैंडेट கம் தோஸ் ஹூ வான்ட் டு ஹெல்ப் திஸ் அண்ட் பில்ட் திஸ் இஃப் யு ஆர் நாட் இன்டு திஸ் gently politely humbly i say please go find another there are many churches oh they are looking for people like you to come go <laughs> go this is not the place man this is a place this is a very bloody place anyone who come here need to go through circumcision or you need to sacrifice you need to bleed to enter this dimension there are not many people can come to this place so i declare the sovereignty of god upon your life i pray that your mind your fallen mind will be raised for the glory of the lord that you will start to see the word of god like never before you will enter the word paradigm you first must understand you have been chosen by god called by god enter to enter this place this is a bloody place full of blood the blood of jesus so i have a have a, a meaningful week start to labor in the word don't fall by hearing nonsense listen to the spirit of god be proactive in pursuing god don't take things under the carito or corner to actually focus on other don't be a foolish person put god's things first in your life if you don't put god first in your life you will never be the first in someone's life everybody will mistreat you the way you mistreated the word of god it's a pattern people who are not treated well because they they put the word of god in front well if you don't know how to put the word of god in your life even young people in front anyone who comes into your life will make a massacre of you and throw you away so prioritize god god is the only real thing we have nothing is real nothing is real so thank you bless you the meeting is over let's continue fellowship over there